Hi, I'm Christy and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've never been here. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So in today's video, I wanted to do the mid-year book freakout tag. We do have another week of June left, but I just wanted to jump in and get started on this video today. I've seen a few friends do this and it looked like a really fun time to talk about kind of our best and favorites and highlights of the year so far. So, so far in 2022, I have read over 300 books. I think I'm like at 310 right now, the last I checked on Goodreads. And I mean, that's pretty typical for my reading. Last year I read just under 650 books and I know that that book number um, sounds high. It is a lot of books. I still can't believe I've read that many books this year. Um, they just fly by. But like I know people who read way more books than me in a year. I know people who read less than me. Like it doesn't matter to me. We're all here. We're all reading. But some of these are definitely gonna be hard for me to answer because when they ask for like best or favorite and they're keeping it like singular, I'm gonna have like a couple options here because I have a lot of favorite books. Okay, so the first question is best book you've read so far in 2022. So again, I'm gonna have a couple favorites here because I've read like so many good books this year, like it's super hard to narrow it down. <laughs> a recent favorite is June 1st. This is probably my favorite contemporary romance I've read this year. This one is just super beautiful. I love Jennifer Hartman's writing. This one is not as dark as some of the other books I read from her. Um, this is lighter. This one does have like a little bit of forbidden-ish vibes just because the hero and heroine end up being raised together. Her family takes him in because because of certain circumstances that happen in the story. So this one is a very emotionally hitting, like I've cried multiple times in this book, like it's just a really beautiful, told over like years and years of this couple's life, like starting when he's six years old. Next is Always Practice Safe Hex by Juliet Cross. This is the fourth book in her Stay a Spell series, which is a contemporary paranormal romance series set in New Orleans with like some witchy sisters. This one is a witch heroine and a grim hero. I love this romance. This is definitely one of my favorites of the year. And if you haven't read the series yet, you should. Um, I believe they're all on Kindle Unlimited. Another favorite is The Bride Goes Rogue by Joanna Shoup. This is the third book in her Fifth Avenue Rebels series. So in this one, the hero and heroine's fathers work together and kind of put like this, our kids will get married one day, like when they're old enough. And so the heroine has took that to heart, like they're betrothed in her eyes. And she goes to him, to the hero and is like, hey, when's this happening? Like, let's get down to our wedding plans. And he's like, um, yeah, I never took that seriously. Like we're not getting married. And so she's kind of put off obviously and hurt and embarrassed and is like, you know what, forget this dude. I'm gonna go out, enjoy the night, go to this like French masquerade ball. And so she ends up meeting the hero there, not knowing they are one another and they have like a super scandalous night together. And so it is their romance. Um, obviously the next days after that, they learn who one another is. And then they kind of have to fight that chemistry and attraction that they have towards one another while also, um, you know, knowing one another in person. <laughs> so this is my favorite, probably new historical romance. No, can't say that. Because I have another one on this list. So this is one of my favorite new historical romances released this year. Okay, so this is my second favorite new historical romance released this year. This is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. I just finished this one this month um, and it's definitely a favorite. So the heroine is actually trans and it is a romance between her and her best friend who is the hero. So the hero is under the assumption that his best friend died during the war and so he's been kind of grieving. Um, he's scarred from that. He has a cane. Like he's just kind of turned into like a recluse. Like he's just in his grief and in his trauma. And the heroine, Viola, she ends up finding out that he's going through all this and decides to go and see him and try to get him out of his grief. And so it is their romance. It's super beautiful, very character driven, like not a whole lot of plot going on but I just loved it. It is a chunky book. I think it could have been shorter. Um, some of the like external conflicts at the end weren't super perfect for me, but like in regards to their romance, it's just really, really beautifully done and like five stars. Like I still loved it. Um, yeah, definitely loved this one. All right. And then since I'm just like making my own things here, like <laughs> those were my favorite new historical romances. These are my favorite old historical romances. So this one is Slightly Dangerous by Barry Balog. This is the sixth and final book in her Bedouin saga series following the Bedouin family. So in this one, um, Wolfric is the duke and he is the older brother of the entire family. He's a very cold and like a starchy duke. Um, and it is his romance that's been leading up like the entire book. Well, not his romance, but like his character of coming out of that like icy cold exterior like has been all of the books before that lead up to this one for him and so I loved this one it's definitely my favorite I love this series check it out another favorite old school historical romance is Through the Storm by Beverly Jenkins this is the first book in her Levesque series 
So in this one, it is a romance between Sable and Raymon. And at the beginning of the story, Sable is enslaved. And so she actually ends up escaping and taking off and she flees to like a refu refugee style war camp where she ends up meeting um, Harriet Tubman, who is disguised, which I always just love the historical facts and tidbits that Beverly Jenkins weaves into her stories. Um, and so little like factoids like that, like of Harriet Tubman being there um, and helping out at some of these refugee camps. And so she ends up meeting Captain Raymond at the camp and they have like some, some nights together. And then she ends up stealing some money from him and fleeing the camp. He no longer trusts her, but then it goes to like a couple months later and she is actually taken in by his mother and his brothers. And the mom is like, hey, I have like a really good idea. You should marry like one of my sons. Like here they all are, have your pick. <laughs> The brothers all love her, his mom loves her, and then Raymond shows up and's like, hey, you guys should get married without even knowing like they actually have some history together. <laughs> so this one's super fun, super great introduction to the Levesque family, which makes appearances in multiple Beverly Jenkins books. Um, yeah, loved this one. And then my favorite, Lisa Kleypas. So this is Where Dreams Begin by Lisa Kleypas. This is the step back for that. I just read this one this month, so it's fresh on my mind. And the hero, Zachary, is a self-made man, and he's gone like as far as he can with fortune and like now he wants into society and actually asks the widowed heroine Lady Holly to help him and his family like learn all the society ways and like you know all the manners and things like that. Ends up hiring Holly and asks her to move in with him as well while she teaches him like all of society's rules. Holly is a single mom and so she has her daughter with her the whole time and so I really liked seeing um, Zachary's relationship that he bonds with her daughter and just the relationship with him and Holly. This one has some super swoony moments. Um, definitely one of my favorite Lisa Clavis books. This is a standalone. All right, favorite time traveling romance. This is Parallel. I just read this whole series this month. Um, this is a book one in the series and it is a very much like soulmates time traveling romance that I really loved. So in this one, the heroine Quinn, she has been having visions her entire life or dreams of like this other life, this other man um, that is her husband. And so even starting when she's like four years old, she's telling her parents like, I need to go back to Nick, like I need to get back to my husband. And they're like, um, girl, what? Like, no, <laughs> you need to go to therapy. Like we need to get you some help because we don't know what our daughter's saying in the middle of the night. And so she grows up her whole life having visions of Nick and their life together, but has kind of put that to a side. And then she is currently engaged to somebody else when she gets into um, some accidents, like she's been passing out and having these visions and waking up and not knowing who she is or where she is, like not knowing her own mom, her own fiance. So they are worried for her and take her to a hospital. At the hospital, she ends up waking up and the doctor is Nick, literally the guy from her dreams. And he is kind of like, I kind of know this girl too, like what's going on? And he's in a relationship, she's in a relationship. And, but they just have this like very much soulmate bond. The more the time they spend together, the more that they both get visions of this other life they've led and it is their story. So, so this series has four books and actually they're kind of like two sets of duets. So like book one leaves on a cliffhanger, that book two finishes up, that's Nick and Quinn's story. And then book three and four, you find out who that's gonna be following and the second book and then book three ends on a cliffhanger that book four um, picks up and book four at the very end does come back around to Nick and Quinn's story so all the stories are related but yeah I loved this series I loved the first two books more than book three and four but that's just like my personal preference but yeah love the series their favorite of mine is Where the Drowned Girls Go by Seanan McGuire this is book I think seven in the Wayward Children series I love this series so much like portal fantasy um, a great LGBTQ plus rep, um, super good, really dark um, fantasy like portal series. Um, they're super like short reads, but I love them all. And two other faves. So my favorite like monster romance of the year has been Found by the Lake Monster. This just came out in June by Lillian Lark. It's the third book in her Monstrous Matches slash like Love Bath Bathhouse series. And this one, the hero is the lake monster and the heroine is a human woman. So he finds her thinking that she's actually a date that was set up with him um, to do like some breeding, mating, and dating action. And he, him and her actually connect right away. They have a really strong bond. And then they of course realize that she isn't who he thought she was, but like they still have a connection. It's a really sweet and beautiful little romance. 
Um, it's like kind of novella length. Uh, yeah, so it has like nodding breeding, obviously there's eggs involved, like whole lot going on, but like super sweet story. Another favorite is Give Me More by Sarah Kate. This is the third book in her Salacious Players Club. This is an MMF romance between a married couple and their best friend. This one is spicy and steamy and sweet and heat and heart and just like delivers all the things and I loved it. Second question is the best sequel you've read in 2022. I am gonna go with this chunky fella, House of Sky and Breath by SJM, the second book in her Crescent City series. <laughs> I loved this one. I've actually read it twice already this year. Um, I love everything SJM writes. Love this one. Fantasy. Can't really talk about it too much because it follows from the previous book. But yeah, love this one. My <laughs> favorite sequel of mine is The Takeover, which is the second book in the Miles High Club by T.L. Swan. This is actually my favorite book in the series. It's my favorite book by T.L. Swan. Like Tristan Miles was everything. <laughs> my friend Tiffany from Tiff Talks Pages actually gifted me this book and I'm so glad because she loved it and then I was able to read it and loved it as well. This book I still think about, Tristan Miles was just like so funny. He has some hilarious moments with the heroine's sons who the heroine is actually Actually like a widowed single mom to three teen boys and Tristan is younger than her and they kind of meet on a work conference together. She thinks it's gonna be like just you know a fling and then he's like hey I wanted to make this serious like what's going on and so it's their romance. Question number three is favorite new release of 2022. So of course some of my favorite reads meet those so that's always Practice Safe Hex that I've already talked about, A Lady for a Duke, and then The Bride Goes Rogue. So I've already talked about those ones. Another favorite of the year is A Daring Pursuit by Kate Bateman. This is the second book in her Ruthless Rival series, which is kind of like feuding families in Wales. This one is like an enemies with benefits situation and I loved it. And another favorite, which actually isn't out until September 27th, but I read an arc of it, is Duke Most Wicked by Lenora Bell. This is the third book in her Wallflowers vs. Rogues series. This is a class difference historical romance. So the hero is a Duke and then the heroine is the music teacher that he ends up hiring for his sisters. It has amazing banter and chemistry. I loved the connection the hero has with his five sisters and it really delivered on the angst. This is probably my favorite Lenora Bell book that I've read. So in this one the hero actually needs an heiress and so he sets out to find himself not only a bride but grooms for all of his sisters while he's at it. And the heroine steps in because she's really close with his sisters and is like whoa 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 like no don't do that to them. Like, please let them have a chance. Like, let them use this season to try to find their own matches. Like, I will chaperone them as well. They end up spending a lot of time together. This one just has, like, so much charm and, like, super close family um, relationships. The heroine, her father is a composer who's going deaf. And she's been secretly composing music as well. Um, it's just a really beautiful story. I've already actually pre-ordered a copy of this one, which I can't wait to get. Um, Lenore Bell lives in Alaska like me, so I purchased it from her um, local indie store where she lives, and I can't wait to get that one. So question four is most anticipated new release of the second half of the year. I have a couple that I know for sure. Like I want to read just all the books. So every month I'm going to have books I'm adding to my TBR. Um, <laughs> but ones that I for sure know of is Before I Let Go, which is a new book by Kennedy Ryan. I love everything she writes. She never disappoints me. Um, can't wait for that one. Then A Wicked Game by Kate Bateman. This is going to be the third book in her Ruthless Rivals series. I believe it comes out in December. And then there is also Villain I'd Like to F, which is an anthology put together by Joanna Shoup, Sierra Simone, Eva Lay, Nicola Davidson, and Adriana Herrera. And this one will be out I believe in November. Um, yeah they've put out two other anthologies in the past two years. So the first was Duke I'd Like to F and then last year's was Rake I'd Like to F. So this year they're doing villains and I am here for it. <laughs> so question five is biggest disappointment of the year so far. I have two books that I can think of for this and it's mostly just because of the hype surrounding it. So the first one was My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey, which just came out. Um, I read this the release week, like I was super looking forward to it and I thought I was gonna love it. Um, Tessa Bailey has always worked for me in the past, like I've been reading her books for probably like four plus years. Um, but yeah, this one just didn't do it for me. And I knew going in what it was gonna be like a spicy, cozy mystery, um, but it just didn't work for me. Like I didn't love the Insta relationship, Insta lust. I didn't like how the characters were. And so this one was just a disappointment for me. But then I know other people who love it. So again, like take all these with a grain of salt because like my least favorite book might be somebody else's favorite book. So it is what it is. <laughs> And then the next disappointment to me was The Return of the Duke, which is the newest book by Lorraine Heath, which comes out in July. It's going to be the third book in her Once Upon a Dukedom series. So this book killed me that I didn't love it. So I mean, I gave it three stars. So like I didn't hate it, but like it didn't 
wasn't like top tier for me. So like Lorraine Heath is my favorite author. Um, I've read like 50 plus of her historical romances. I'm currently working through her backlist. I only have a few more to go. Um, there's like maybe five out of the like 50 plus that I've read. I've given three stars. So like she's always a four and five star author for me. Um, this book I was really looking forward to and it just didn't work for me. So the other two books in the series were five stars for me. Um, I was expecting this one to be as well but it just felt very different. Like I'm not really a fan of spy like espionage style stories so that was already a factor because this book is really heavy on that. And this one I just didn't even feel like the characters were very enjoyable and I thought the romance was really lacking um, in comparison to the spy and espionage part of the story. And this book just felt to me like kind of like like I don't know if this is what Lorraine was going through but like I've seen some interviews with her talking about this series and writing this book in particular and then um, how she was looking forward to writing a the next series which is gonna be like the Chessman series or something like that like I know she's ready like this book just felt like I'm ready to move on like let's get this series over with I have this new series I'm excited for and I'm also writing this like World War II historical fiction like I have other things going on that's what it felt like to me when I was reading the book because it didn't feel like the classic um, Lorraine Heath vibes that I know and love and so I don't know that's just my thoughts on maybe what was going on and why I didn't connect with that one as well. But I have heard from other friends that they really loved it so it might work for you I don't know. <laughs> Question six is biggest surprise of 2022. I actually just finished a book yesterday that um, fits for this prompt so um, I just finished reading King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. This one really surprised me because I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. <laughs> So this book actually came out last fall and it was on my TBR like before it even came out. Super excited for like fantasy, paranormal, like vampire romance. Give it to me. Yes. Um, but then this closer it came to release date, I started hearing like some mixed reviews and some reviews from friends who weren't really loving it um, even when it was out. So I was like, ooh, I'm going to like take a pause on that, put it to the back burner. I had read some other books by Scarlet and St. Clair and they've never really been favorites either. So I was just kind of like putting this one off, but I decided to pick it up and read it this month. And I'm so glad I did because I ended up loving it. I don't know if like, since I went in with lowered expectations, like it just blew me out of the water more or what, but I loved the very like soulmates vibe that this romance had. Um, it wasn't perfect by any means. Like I gave it four stars. I think the plot was definitely lacking, but like the chemistry and connection between the characters and that whole like soulmate vibe they had going on really worked for me. And so this one is the hero is a vampire king and the heroine is his enemy's daughter. And so they have like an arranged marriage. She's supposed to marry the vampire king and then kill him because you know her dad's kingdom doesn't want this army of vampires outside of their gates and when she gets there him and her like have a connection they actually have a connection um before she even finds out who he is and like that she has to marry him and i just just loved it and ate it up and another surprise for me was up all night with the good duke by amy rose bennett this is a historical romance that comes out on june 28th i read an arc of this one like last month i've talked about it multiple times like it's one of my favorites um it just blew me away because i had never read this author before wasn't really expecting much and it became like a new favorite. And in that one, the hero, he has to, he's like a single father, he's widowed, he has to remarry, um, to like get an heir and all that. And then the heroine is a school teacher by day and a gothic romance writer by night. And it's their romance. I loved everything about it. The chemistry, the connection, the conversations, the banter, the relationship with his daughter, like everything just worked really well for me in this one. And question number seven is favorite new author, whether a debut or new to me. So I have a couple new favorite authors this year. So the first one is Elisa Braden. I had been wanting to read her books for over a year now um, and finally did at the beginning of this year. This is book five in her Rescued from Ruin series. This is when a girl loves an Earl, which is my favorite, one of my favorites in the series. She's an indie historical romance writer. Um, I love her writing and definitely want to check out more from her. Their favorite is Anne Stewart. I read Ruthless from her at the beginning of the year. That was from like a friend's recommendation. Um, I really love this one. It's very like anti-hero vibes, um, kind of darker. Really loved it. If you haven't checked this book out, I definitely recommend it. And then another favorite is Nikki Castle. I read Five Rounds and Two Fights, which is in her sports romance series and really loved it. Um, I read these on Kindle Unlimited. They are MMA 
fighter romances. And another new favorite author is Jennifer Hartman. Um, this is the recent one that I just read June 1st, but I started reading her books in January with Still Beating. I also read Lotus and The Wrong Heart. Um, Still Beating and June 1st are my favorites from her. She is an indie contemporary romance writer. Some of them are dark, like Still Beating is definitely dark, her darkest. Um, this one is more kind of light, forbidden-ish angst, um, emotional read so for sure. And question number eight is favorite hero. So I have A Sweet Lullaby from Lorraine Heath and the hero Jake. So in this book, Jake is a ranch hand and his boss calls him into the office one day and is like, hey, what do you think of my daughter, Rebecca? And Jake's like, uh, yeah, I like her. Like, she's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And so the dad's like, well, hey, she's knocked up. So like, I need you to marry her because her dude left her. And so it becomes a marriage of convenience. Um, Rebecca is pregnant with another man's baby. Jake takes her in and is just like the sweetest, swooniest, like most wholesome hero there ever was. Like so much charm and swoon. And he's that type of hero who like, um, is definitely full of self-doubt, doesn't think he's worthy of anything. He has like a super tragic past and is just so lonely and just wants love and like this family. And this book is just like, it's pretty short, very angsty, a um, little bit messy, but like it's Lorraine Heath. What do we expect? Um, but yeah, super beautiful story. And like Jake is definitely an all-time favorite hero for me. And then question number nine is favorite heroine. So I have A Brutal Vows here by J.T. Geisinger. This is the fourth book and last book in her Queens and Monsters series. And this one, Reyna is the heroine and her brother is one of the heads of like the five Italian mafia mobs. Reyna is known as the Black Widow because she's a widowed heroine and her husband was killed. So at the beginning of the story, her brother wants to marry off his daughter to Spider, the hero of this book. And Reyna is like, um, hold up. I don't want my niece to go through what I went through. So I'm gonna be put in charge of like who she's marrying and if I agree to it or not. And so it ends up becoming a Spider and Reyna's story instead. And Reyna is just like a super badass heroine. She wants all the mafia guys to bow to her and she is not afraid to stand up to them and like take charge and I just loved that energy from her. Question number 10 is books that made you cry this year. So I don't feel like I typically cry that often in books I read. There's definitely some that do make me cry and I have I think like four or five that have made me cry that I can remember so far this year. The first one is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Um, I had had this book on my TBR for years and finally got to it at the beginning of this year. This one does deal with domestic abuse and domestic violence. So this one is just very hard hitting and emotional. Um, like I was worried during this book if it's gonna have a happy ending because it was definitely um, not looking like that way for a while for a few of the characters. It had me crying in the book and then also had me crying like sobbing during reading the author's note at the end of the book. So then another one that has made me cry this year is Kingdom of Ash by SJM. This is the seventh and last book in her Throne of Glass series. And so this book, I think I was only like 30% in and I had cried like four times. Like this book was just hitting so hard, like right out of the gate. Can't really say much about it because it is the final book in this fantasy series. So just all the characters, like you grow to love them and appreciate them and like just everything that had led them to the path they were on in this book like was coming to a head and I was just sobbing like reading this one. Another book that made me cry is June 1st by Jennifer Hartman. Um, I just read this one this month. This one has like just super sweet moments. I actually didn't start crying until towards the end. There's like these moments that happen um, which if you've read the book you know what that is in regards to the story and those I was just sobbing reading them. Another one is Parting Gifts by Lorraine Heath. I just read this one this month. This is one of her older Western historical romances. So it was written, I think, in like 1996. This one, the premise is the heroine. She is like definitely down on her luck, like sold her clothes, is like for food and shelter. And so now she's having to barter off her body. Um, and so at the beginning of the story, she is at a brothel trying to sell her virginity just to have a shelter and a place to live. And also there that night is a widower with three children and he overhears or he sees her up there and is like, that girl does not look comfortable. Like I need to rescue her. So he ends up paying for her and is like, hey, instead of doing that, like come back to my place. I need a wife, like I wanna get married. Um, and yeah, I need help like running my inn and taking care of my children. And so Charles ends up saving Maddie and taking her back with him to his inn to meet his children. So we know from the synopsis and from the POV of Charles and then later on Jesse, his brother. Um, so I'll just read the back. So it says, Overnight, she went from a dire situation to a comfortable home filled with the warmth of a family. But the truth behind their quick marriage was bittersweet, for Charles Lawson knew he was dying, and he wanted more than anything to leave his children with the gift of love, 
with a kind and caring mother. So yeah, so the hero ends up becoming Charles's brother, Jesse. And so it's a very kind of, I mean, Lorraine Heath does messy, but like this is done in a really beautiful way. We know from the synopsis, we know from the POVs of the other guys in the book that the her husband is dying. Um, Maddie does not know though throughout the book, but they are in like a platonic marriage. And so it gets a little messy because like I said, it's the her falling for her brother-in-law. This one is very sweet and sad, obviously. Um, if cheating of any kind is a problem for you, probably don't read this one. For me personally, I can read them. Um, it doesn't bother me, especially in a case like this when her marriage is platonic and they both know that. Um, but then it's a kind of her emotional cheating and, you know, a couple of kisses with her brother-in-law. But yeah, super kind of messy, angsty, forbidden-ish romance, but it's just like a really beautiful story and I definitely cried in this one. Question number 11 is books that made you happy. So this one I'm going to go with Seatmate by Cara Bastone and this is the third book in her like Audible um, Originals productions. I just really love this one. Like it's sweet and wholesome and fun. Um, it the whole like audio narration is a lot of fun. Like you're on this bus ride with the couple, they end up becoming like seatmates on a bus and it's kind of their whole adventure throughout the day. I just loved the like charming and wholesomeness of this. So, like entire audio narration was just like super fun and delightful to listen to. And question number 12 is most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. So I am going to go like, I think all of these books are beautiful. That's why I have them on my shelves. So like, that's super hard to pick like your favorite or best. Um, like I love all books that I get sent, um, but these ones are going to be my favorite. I just got them in the mail recently. So like they're kind of more fresh on my mind, but it is the special edition for Kennedy Ryan's All the King's Men duet. So this is the Kingmaker book one, and then this is the second book, The Rebel King. These are also signed by Kennedy, which was fun. Um, these were part of the seventh anniversary collection for the Bookworm box. They did special edition covers for like I think like a handful of authors, like I think like 14 or 15 authors they did. Love a special edition. This is my favorite series by Kennedy Ryan, so I definitely had to have them. And then the last question is question number 13, which says books that you need to read or finish by the end of the year. So like obviously I want to read all the books, <laughs> so I have so many that I want to finish. Um, the one I can think of right now is like I need to read Mogul by Joanna Shoup. It's the last book in her Knickerbocker series, which is actually the last book I need to read to be caught up on her entire backlist. So I want to read that one. Um, I have a few other authors that I'm working on their backlists for. So Lisa Claypis, I only have like a handful left to go. Lorraine Heath, I only have a handful left to go. Beverly Jenkins, I only have a few more to read. Um, and those are like authors I've been working on their backlists for like at least two years, but that I try Try to like take my time with and read like a series or a book here and there because they're my favorites and I don't want to run out of them but at the same time I want to read them all so like you know so maybe those I'd like to finish by the end of the year. <laughs> So those are all the questions I got through this. Um, let me know in the comments below what maybe some of your answers would be to these questions or if you've read or have any similar thoughts as me to the books that I mentioned. So leave me a comment, make sure to like and subscribe as well so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I'll see you in my next one.